What's up YouTube? Drew here and I want to talk to you guys today about sway bar links. They are a relatively simple item that does quite a big work in your car. So before we actually go about how to get them off and how to change them, let's go over to the notepad. Remember, I'm old school. So here's your car from the sky, okay? So here would be your windshield. Here would be your sunroof. Here would be your back window. Here would be your back license plate. You get where I'm getting at? So you've got your tire. We'll say that's your front tire, that's your other front tire, and I'm not an art major. Now, as you know, these wheels move up and down as you go over bumps, but there is a bar that is shaped like this, and I'm going to show you this in the car, so make sure you stay tuned, and that bar is connected to the frame of the car in a way that it can it could rotate. So if it was my hand, you see how the bar is shaped like my hand? It could do one of these. So from the side, if you were looking at your car, it could do one of these. But as it twists, you see, and these are, um, the end of this bar is, for, both of these can move up and down freely with no resistance. But if one wants to move up and down, this bar is twisting, like, um, you know, literally like trying to, if you grabbed any piece of steel, we'll say like this, socket extension. You try to twist this, it doesn't want to do that. And if it's spring steel, it'll give you, it basically will act like a spring, right? So if you were to fix one of these so it can't move up and down and then jump on this one, it would literally act like a leaf spring or a coil spring. It would bounce. So both of the ends of these, which again are free to move up and down, are connected to the part of the suspension that moves up and down with the wheel. So if the car goes into a roll, it wants to twist this bar and it keeps it straight. That's what a sway bar does. Now a sway bar link, and I've got one apart already for you here. A sway bar link is a ball. This is like a trailer hitch ball or a ball joint. It's literally a ball and socket so things can move around freely. And when that ball and socket wears out, these can make like a, a clunking, which, and it, like I told you, the, a sway bar is spring steel. Uh, if you've ever heard a grandfather clock, you know those big clocks that are in cabinets? A lot of them for bells actually have spring steel bars that get hit, not, a, not like a cup-shaped bell, but a bar. Sway bars make a lot of noise, and that's what you're hearing when you hear that when you go through road irregularities and you can't find anything loose in your suspension. A lot of times it's sway bar links. So what I'm here to show you is an easier way to take these off. First of all, if one of them's worn out and you put a new one on just one side on an old car like this 2004 Corolla here, which is ridiculously rust-free and gorgeous and southern, which is why I'm putting in the effort to it. Uh, if you replace one of these, chances are the one on the other side is gonna go bad in relatively short order. So what I'm here to show you is a lot of times what I like to do because the nuts and bolts are hard to work with after age, um, you know, on a, maybe on a California, this, this car is from like Maryland, right? Maybe on a, a California car or uh, something like that. Or actually, excuse me, this car is from Long Island. They only get about 15 inches of snow a year compared to the uh, 120 inches we've averaged since 1860 up here in Rochester. Um, nine hours, eight hours, nine hours away. Um, but say, say you had a car from like, you know, Florida or California where they, you know, it's never been exposed to any kind of road salt. You could put a, a five millimeter in the end of this and take the bolt off. And this is going to apply to a lot of different cars. Those might not be, you know, it might not be the same design. But a lot of times, most times, sadly, if you're anywhere north of the Dixon, Mason Dixon line, you have to cut these off. So what I like to do is I take my cutoff tool and I go straight in like this from the front and slice the stud and the nut in half. And then I just get in there with a chisel. And I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have to show you this, but um, you know, so just you get into your cut you made with a chisel, hit it with a hammer and then tap this back closed and the nut should just fall off. Well, since you know now that you should do both sides, I wanted to show you a trick. These are almost impossible to cut off that way. You can't get your tool in there, right? But since you have them both off, like I told you, this bar can now move. So now look at that. It's up where you can much more easily and carefully, because you don't want to hurt the face of the spring here, ride your cutoff wheel blade against, and you could even slice the top of this, again, being careful of the spring steel bar, slice the top of this to get the, the socket off the ball if you want. The other one just popped off because that was the one that was really worn. Um, they both have a little play. But now that this is up and out of the way of the tie rod and the control arm and the bottom of the strut, you could just slice that right off. So um, again, this, these, this is connected to the frame right there. 
with uh, you see that that's a big metal loop and inside of it let me get you a little closer to it if I can right there dead center of your screen and you see that little slit in the rubber that's how they how they managed to go over right there so that bar remember again it's shaped like this it can do this all it wants it just can't twist and that's the twisting as one you know one side of the car that's just a little scratch there as one side of this wheel wants to go up because you're cornering this way right so it's pushing this wheel up and this wheel what that bar does is it, it levels the car back out so that's what a sway bar is how it works, how the links connect it to the body of the car, and how I have always saved hours and hours of time screwing around with just a simple cutoff wheel, a brass hammer, a pair of safety glasses, which is incredibly important because, you know, God gave you two eyeballs. You don't want to throw away one of them being silly. Um, and then just a plain chisel or a flathead screwdriver if you're desperate. The handle will probably break and then you'll have a chisel, right? But anyways, not really because this is hardened steel. So I'm sure at some point if you're watching this, you had an aha moment. That means you'll like it hopefully, and I would be absolutely grateful if you'd give this video a thumbs up. It helps show the internet that this is good content. It shows more people, which blesses them and also blesses me because, of course, the more views, the better. That's why I put this stuff up here for you guys, trying to build the channel. So again, if it was helpful or if you liked it, please give it that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more tips like this. There's a lot of Corolla, um, and Prius specific old school Toyota specific content, but there's also just these general tips So even if you're like a Chevy guy or gal, whatever go ahead and subscribe my wife drives a Chevy and I'll be working on that So there you go, right? But just for general car tips and eventually Some restoration work. It's a 1954 Chevy me and my boy are gonna put together my oldest So if you're into that kind of stuff if this is the channel for you go ahead and subscribe turn on notifications And hey listen if you're frustrated right now because you're stuck Take a deep breath. If I could do this, you could do this. And that's because I was not born with an ASC certification. I've been working on cars for 21 years, feeding a family of six, doing it. And I still don't have one. So if I could do it, you could do it. Hang in there. You got this. God bless. Take care and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.